Just as Walt Disney said, Disney parks will never be completed. They continue to grow and change as time goes by. Rides have been upgraded, some of the most popular characters have become rare, animatronics have been abandoned, and lands have been retired. I'm Walt, the animatronic duck, and I'm joined by Will Engel to talk about seven Disney Parks lands that have been retired. Sunshine Plaza, location, Disney's California Adventure. When we designed Disney's California Adventure, we looked at the experts. Make sure you get some! <laughs> Make it creepy! Make it go! Make it goofy! <laughs> Make me a star! We got it! Disney's California Adventure is way cool! Are you mouse enough? When you enter Disneyland, you step into the charming, turn-of-the-century Midwest town of Main Street, USA, an idealized and romanticized version of the Missouri town that Walt grew up in. Just across the way is the entrance to Disney's California Adventure, a wide concrete plaza flanked by corrugated steel walls. Yes, this was in a Disney park. Garish neon signs and cartoonish architecture in squash perspective. Sunshine Plaza was a budget-conscious and lackluster entryway on its own, but compared with Main Street just a few hundred feet away, it looked positively awful. And where Disneyland's entry terminated in the timeless Sleeping Beauty Castle, Sunshine Plaza was built around a giant metallic sculpture of the sun. Nicknamed the Hubcap by fans, the giant bronze sun faced north, leaving it up to a half dozen telescoping mirrors to reflect the real sun onto its shaded face. The effect never worked as it was intended, and Sunshine Plaza remained like a dark and mediocre entrance to a mediocre park, especially when compared to Disneyland across the street. Sunshine Plaza was symptomatic of the edgy, modern style of the original California Adventure Park, which didn't work as we've talked about before. Sunshine Plaza also had a beautiful fountain under the sun icon, where people could throw coins in as a way to donate to Disneyland. Disney's charitable division that helps charitable organizations throughout the world. The area also served as a show area where you could see things like the X Games experience, an extreme sports demonstration, a culinary demonstration in the Chef Showcase stage tent during the California Food and Wine Festival, a live show based on High School Musical 3 senior year, or a colorful, high energy show during Glowfest. But even that couldn't make the area work. What's there now? Sunshine Plaza closed one piece at a time when Disney California Adventure's $1.1 billion restructuring came into effect. The transformation was so intense that, for a while, entrance to the park was diverted down an auxiliary path behind Soarin' Over California, bypassing the main entry path completely. The vacant concrete area was transformed into Buena Vista Street, a recreation of the Los Angeles Walt first encountered in the 1920s. Now a bustling street just as detailed and timeless as Main Street, the new land is a worthy counterpart to Disneyland's entry, instead of being such a contrast. The sun icon disappeared too, replaced by a recreation of Los Angeles' Carthy Circle Theater, where Walt risked it all by premiering the world's first full-length animated feature film, a testament to Walt's history, the company's, and California's. Brilliant and a fantastic change if you ask us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a duck emoji if you like my crown. Holiday Land. Location, Disneyland Park. Holiday Land is often recalled as Disneyland's first lost land. No, it wasn't an area dedicated to Christmas, Easter, and other culturally significant days of celebration. Holiday Land was more along the lines of the British understanding of holiday, an outlying or vacation. The land was accessed through a separate entrance and contained a striped circus tent with a stage, volleyball court, a baseball field, a children's playground, a picnic area, and horseshoe pits. You can get an idea of Holiday Land's placement and layout on this large 1962 souvenir map. Despite its inclusion on the map, Holiday Land didn't last until 1962. It closed forever in 1961, allegedly due to its lack of shade, lighting, and restrooms. Truthfully, Holiday Land was probably meant to be temporary, built with a much different lean than the rest of the park in its cinematic realism. The nine-acre spot held 7,000 guests for special events and even sold beer. Milt Albright, Disney legend and manager of Holiday Land, 
said of its closure, it wasn't any one thing that killed Holidayland. It was just the combined effect of a whole lot of things. What's there now? The map above shows where Holidayland would have been in 1962 if it had lasted that long. The map also shows Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion, which wouldn't open until 1967 and 1969 respectively. So the 1962 map was pretty inaccurate. The space was used for the Haunted Mansion show building and other backstage elements of New Orleans Square, which opened in 1966. Camp Mickey Minnie, location Disney's Animal Kingdom. During Disney's Animal Kingdom's lifetime, it has hosted gorgeously, thoroughly themed lands, recreating a flowing universal garden, a crumbling African village, a stunning Asian market, and a North American excavation camp. Then there was Camp Mickey Minnie. The land was a stark contrast to the realistic villages of the rest of the park, filled with temporary wooden structures and long, meandering paths that didn't seem to lead anywhere. The decorations and even structures felt temporary. That's because they were supposed to be. Camp Mickey Minnie was supposed to be a very short-lived land holding the place of Beastly Kingdom, the proposed mythical creature land designed for Animal Kingdom. Of course, Beastly Kingdom was never built, so Camp Mickey Minnie prodded on with its one show and character meet and greets for more than 15 years. What's there now? In 2011, a new exciting land was announced. Pandora, the world of Avatar, was coming to life in the place of where Beastly Kingdom had been planned. Camp Mickey Mini was finally permanently closed in 2014. This land is based on James Cameron's film Avatar and is set a generation after the film events. Pandora has two main attractions, Avatar Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey. This land also includes Pandora's floating mountains, alien wildlife, and bioluminescent plants. Hollywood Pictures Backlot. Location, Disney California Adventure. Sir, he's in. Buzz Lightyear confirming. There is indeed a neighboring park. Easy, Buzz. Heads up. I see their leader. Greetings, 100-foot grizzly bear. I come in. <gasps> a giant apparatus is lifting entire families. And alien life forms are everywhere. Mm. Hey, want to go for a spin? Whoa! That's it! Somebody has to go in there! Any volunteers? I volunteer! <laughs> You've got to head on over to Disney's California Adventure. Disney's California Adventure had only four themed lands when it first opened. The first was Sunshine Plaza, which we already discussed. The others were Paradise Pier, Golden State, and the uninspired Hollywood Pictures backlot. Inexplicably designed to resemble a Hollywood set recreation of Hollywood, just a short drive from the real Hollywood, the backlot area was full of honey business signs and window displays, 2D facade buildings, and electrical poles. The land's only inhabitants were a massive theater hosting standard fair rotating musicals that played to quarter-full houses and the worst dark ride Disney's ever built, Superstar Limo. What's there now? When Disney California Adventure reopened in 2012, it brought along with it two new themed lands, Cars Land and Buena Vista Street. While every other land was renamed and given a new identity, Hollywood Pictures' backlot would cease being a modern facade-filled studio and instead became Hollywood Land. Now tied thematically to neighboring Buena Vista Street, the land represents a 1930s golden age of Hollywood, with the red car trolley whisking guests down the street and to the foot of the glamorous Hollywood Tower Hotel, which now has become Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. The Hyperion Theater at the end of the street used to host the long-running and wildly beloved Aladdin, and has also shown shows like Frozen and Rogers. The remaining backlot-themed portion of the land was rebranded as the more glamorous Hollywood Studios and cleaned up to more accurately resemble an idealized studio with the charming and classic Monsters, Inc. dark ride replacing Superstar Limo. Bountiful Valley Farm, location, Disney California Adventure. Perhaps the most laughable of all themed lands ever devised for a Disney park, Bountiful Valley Farm was a sort of sub-land within the all-encompassing Golden State at the original Disney's California Adventure, built to be a tribute to the abundance and diversity of agriculture in California. It was an exhibition where visitors could walk through fields of real orange trees, stumble across cow statues, and learn about irrigation systems while cooling off in the irrigation station water play area. But the main event of Bountiful Valley Farms were the tractors. Sponsored by Caterpillar, Bountiful Valley Farm had a tractor exhibition 
where you could learn about tractor history, admire some exciting Caterpillar equipment, and take a look at three current models. This was not a ride. The best you could do was climb into the cab of one of the tractors. The one attraction in the land was It's Tough to Be a Bug, the 3D film based on Disney Pixar's A Bug's Life. Pretty quickly, Disney executives realized that California Adventure had almost nothing to actually do and practically zero rides for young kids. Empty space south of the park became a new land called A Bug's Land, absorbing the 3D film and part of Bountiful Valley Farm. Have you ever felt the shade from a field of clover? Ever sailed on a leaf from a tree ten times your size? Ever rubbed elbows with creatures who have six of them? Now's your chance to discover a fun new land of gigantic proportions. Flix Funfair at Disney's California Adventure. Oh, come live the life of a bug in a whole new land with five new attractions. Flix Funfair, opening October 2002 at Disney's California Adventure. Ah, lovely. What's there now? The farm area closed for good in 2010. The land was annexed between a bug's land and the starting point for the desert road into Cars Land. Cars Land opened on June 15, 2012. It is situated where the Timon parking lot and where Bountiful Valley Farms used to be. This land is awesome. It contains three rides as well as shops and restaurants, all situated in a perfect replica of Radiator Springs. A Bug's Land was closed in September of 2018 to make way for Avengers Campus, which opened in 2021. Mickey's Toontown Fair, location, Magic Kingdom. In 1988, Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World introduced a new themed land, Mickey's Birthday Land. The temporary land was built to celebrate Mickey's 60th birthday. While clearly constructed to be temporary, it was a charming land recreating the streets of Duckburg and terminating in a large circus tent for a birthday celebration show. Mickey's birthday could only last so long though, and in 1990, the land was renamed Mickey's Starland and Disney's afternoon cartoon block characters were added. Following in its younger sister's footsteps, Disneyland in California added the similar, but much more permanent land in 1993 called Mickey's Toontown. In 1996, Magic Kingdom decided to make its cartoon-themed land permanent, too. Instead of duplicating Disneyland's Toontown, designers at the Magic Kingdom reused much of Starland's infrastructure and developed a new story, casting the new Mickey's Toontown Fair as a country getaway for the characters, separate from their permanent homes in California. Toontown Fair had a meet-and-greet inside the Circus Stripe Judge's Tent, walk through country homes for Mickey and Minnie, and the Barnstormer a family coaster that cast Goofy as a daredevil pilot crop-dusting his Wiseacre farmstead. The exaggerated cartoon architecture probably read as cheap when compared to the realistic lands throughout the rest of the park. What's there now? When Disney announced new Fantasyland for the Magic Kingdom, the land formerly occupied by Toontown Fair was supposed to become Pixie Hollow, a land of oversized blades of grass and mushrooms. It would have been home to an elaborate and expansive meet and greet for Tinkerbell and her fairy companions from the direct-to-video film series. Fans recoiled at Pixie Hollow and the rest of the overtly princess-themed expansion, so Disney went back to the drawing board. Toontown Fair was, in some ways, spared, becoming the charming and outstanding storybook circus, a turn-of-the-century themed traveling circus area within New Fantasyland lovingly dedicated to the classic and often forgotten Disney characters. The hyper-detailed land may share a circus tent or two in common with Toontown Fair, but the exaggerated and tune style architecture is gone, replaced with real brick buildings, canvas signs, and charming illusions that are all class. Most prominently, Dumbo the Flying Elephant was relocated to Storybook Circus, with doubled capacity and an awesome indoor playground queue. Old Fantasyland Location, Magic Kingdom. Fantasyland opened at both Disneyland in 1955 and the Magic Kingdom in 1971. Its many charming classic dark rides were concealed behind medieval tent exteriors. Striped awnings with jousting rods as poles and simple marquees did an effective job, but were contrary to Walt's hope for the area. In 1983, 
Disneyland welcomed a new fantasy land, replacing the aging medieval motif with incredible European facades. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was inside a red brick recreation of Toad Hall, Snow White's scary adventure in a German castle with vines crawling up its exterior, Peter Pan's flight, inside a Tudor-style manor with an English clock tower outside. Finally, Walt's dreams of a romanticized fantasy land had arrived. But at Magic Kingdom, the medieval tents lived on, simple exteriors with dated pastel colors that did little to inform guests of the detailed dark rides within. What's there now? Half of Fantasyland retains the medieval tent style, but a very purposeful new Fantasyland began construction in 2011, dividing the land in half. The eastern half was entirely rebuilt and updated in Cars Land style, with intricate details and new sub-areas, including Storybook Circus. <laughs> Well, we're really thrilled to take guests beyond the walls of Cinderella Castle, where they're going to discover whole new worlds featuring some of our most iconic stories and characters. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Now, okay, one, two, three. <laughs> the new style contains a whole section of Beauty and the Beast attractions, a seaside village, and Mediterranean castle built into eroded cliffs comprising a Little Mermaid area, and a Seven Dwarves mine train, complete with cottage that set the forest theme alive. There's also the New Age meet and greet slash show slash walkthrough of Enchanted Tales with Belle, and the awesome Be Our Guest restaurant. It's sort of an evolution of theme parks, detailed environments you want to spend time in instead of focusing just on rides. And if you want to visit any of these new areas, you have to plan your next Disney vacation. Our friends at PixieVacations.com can help you plan your perfect vacation to Disneyland, Disney World, or a Disney cruise, specifically tailored to your vacation style and budget. And working with a Pixie is completely free. So talk with them to make the best out of your Disney vacation.